So we're in lesson one dash. I forgot where we're at now. Is it eight? Yeah, oh no, one dash seven. One dash seven has everything in it. It's kind of crazy. And this, today we're going to talk about dividing in scientific notation. So again, what's great is that, um, so we're going to go on the, let's go on the right side with our notes. And then scientific notation, no, no, let's do it all on one side. It's small notes. Let's just do everything all on one side. So you can go on the left side is fine, and you can do your homework on the other side or vice versa. Today's date is, oops, 10 21, 15 which by the way, significance, this is the day in the movie Back to the Future that he went to. So this is his future date. <laughs> It, no, kind of doesn't look anything like the movie. So everybody wants us to be in hovercrafts and whatnot, but it just it didn't happen. Huh? It was back in the 80s, I think it came out. I was a kid and enjoyed watching those movies. So there's multiple versions of it. Anyway, so dividing in scientific notation. Basically, we have a problem that looks like this. 4 times 10 to the 5th, I'm going to give you pretty numbers, divided by 2 times 10 squared. And again, if we write it as a vertical problem, and, and your book presents them mainly as vertical problems, a lot of times I will see in textbooks it written horizontally like this because they can actually cram more problems on the page. The first thing I do is if I rearrange it to look like 4 times 10 to the 5th, divided by 2 times 10 squared. Now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. So what we're going to do is we don't need to use commutative property like what we saw in the video for multiplication because the way it's written vertically, we already are organizing like things near each other. But what I am going to use is the associative property. And the associative property says we're going to do the math with the coefficients. So we're going to do 4 divided by 2. We're also going to do math with the like bases, the 10 to the 5th divided by the 10 squared. So the reason why this shows up after we learned about rules on exponents is because we have to use the rules for exponents on this one. So on 4 divided by 2, that answer is, Two. Now what do I get to write next? Times. I'm going to convince Johnson to use X's, not dots. But we'll see. He may win out on this one. Now when it comes to exponents in division, what do I do with the exponents? I subtract. Top, take away, bottom. Now, what I did see on the quiz is some of you went bottom, take away, top. And I'm going to tell you that's not going to work on this one. Because we're not going to leave our answer with positive exponents. We're going to leave our answer with the exponent that it gets. Okay? So I have a base of 10, and 5 take away 2 is 3. So my answer is 2 times 10 cubed. Now, what if I said, that's scientific notation, yay. But what if I said, you know what, I also want to know what that answer is in standard form. What would 2 times 10 cubed be equal to in standard form? So without the times 10 to the whatever. So many? 200. Let's see. Here's my decimal point. How many places am I moving it? 3. How many? What direction? Right. It's a positive 3. 1, 2, 3. Ooh, I've got 3 blanks to fill in. So it would be 2,000 would be in standard form. Uh, you're going to be asked to float between both of them. It depends on what the directions ask for. Okay. All right, so let's go back and we're going to write in words what we just did. So what is our process? First, rewrite problem.
vertically. Now, like I said, what I'm looking at right now in the book, it already has it vertically, but that's not always going to be the case. Rewrite problem vertically, so it's going to be first value divided by second value. Now, what's going to cause you problems on a quiz or test is if you decide to change your numbers to standard form and then do long multiplication or long division, you will not get very much credit at all because you're missing the whole point. It's so much easier to do this math with the problem written in scientific notation. Step two, divide the coefficients. So I'm going to put in parentheses decimal values. That looks like a weird word. Okay. And then you're going to write the time symbol. And then you're going to subtract the exponents on the base of 10. And so just to remember, that's going to be 10, the top exponent, minus the bottom exponent. It needs to, has to go in that direction. So EXP stands for exponent. Now, what could happen to this answer? What might be the issue with this answer? What do you think could potentially occur? Ethan? Say again? No, 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 no. I'm saying... We're, we did everything right the stepwise, but what could be an issue that crops up when I'm done? Melissa? Yeah. We need to check to see if the answer is in the standard notation or in scientific notation. Check to see if answer is in scientific notation. And the key is decimal between 1 and 10. So it can't be 10 or more, and it can't be less than 1. So if our decimal is where we need it to be, like the example we did, we're good as gold. We're done. But if it isn't, we're going to have to work a little harder. So we'll just add here, if not, oops, sorry, 6. I know how to count. If not, write final answer in scientific notation. So I'm going to abbreviate that SN. So what I want to do is give you an example where my answer doesn't end up in scientific notation. So I want to make sure that you understand the process that was in that video. So those of you who didn't watch the video, very important you go back and watch the video so that you can see that. So let's do an example. And the directions, I'm going to give you two directions on this. And again, your book, you just have to read what your book says and what happens in your problems. Now, I have to be honest with you. We are going to give you word problems on your test. Your job is to then determine, add, subtract, multiply, or divide scientific notation. You are just getting basic do this problem. So we're going to kind of couch it in word problems. So um, evaluate. Let's see, do they use that? Yeah, evaluate. Write in scientific notation and standard form. 
So I want two answers. This is just from here, so that you know to go through your practicing the second one. All right, so let's do 3 times 10 to the negative 4th. And I'm just going to go ahead and have it already written out for us. Divided by 6 times 10 to the negative 2nd. So we already have it so that we can block our decimal portions. And I'm going to tell you your numbers aren't quite as pretty. They do include decimals in your homework, which is good. You need practice. And then we can put our powers of 10 together. So this seems to be an area of concern that I see is 3 divided by 6. Can I divide 6 into 3? No. This is not going to give me a whole number answer because my denominator is larger than my numerator. So the only thing I can do is factor out a common factor. So what do 3 and 6 have in common? Don't listen to him. It's a 3. 2 doesn't go into that. Yeah. 3 divided by 3 is not a blank. It's a 1. 6 divided by 3 is a 2. Now, we're doing decimals, so what would this answer be as a decimal? We can't write the answer as a fraction. We would get 0.5. Now, you can do long division, right? 3 uh, is divided by 6. Put in a decimal point, add a 0. 6 goes into 35 times, okay? So that's what you're going to see, 0. 0.5. And then we write times. And then on our base of 10, we're going to take the exponents, negative 4, take away negative 2. So notice I have a double negative. So what happens to that double negative? It gets one big positive. So now we're going to keep going here, and we get 0.5 times 10 to the, what's negative 4 plus 2? Negative 2. Signs are different. You're going to subtract. Bigger number is negative, so you're going to get a negative. 4 take away 2 is 2. Does your answer meet scientific notation? No. no. 0.5 is not in scientific notation. So all I'm going to focus in on is that 0.5. And I'm going to rewrite 0.5. I don't worry about that times 10 to the negative second. I'm going to look at 0.5, and I'm going to rewrite him in scientific notation. So that would require moving the decimal point once. Now, what kind of number did I have to begin with? Okay, very large, very small. 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 What sign goes with very small? Negative. No, negative. So that one is a negative one. But I still have the times 10 to the negative second. So I'm going to continue over here. So what we're going to do at this point is we're now going to group the new 10s. I have a 10 to the negative first times 10 to the negative second. And because it's multiplication, what am I doing to those exponents? What am I doing with them? When I multiply monomials and the bases are the same, I add. The signs are the same, so I'm going to add. They're both negative, so my answer is negative, and that is the final answer. 5 times 10 to the negative third power. We don't say negative cube powder, power, power, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting ready for Hotel Transylvania, right? Now I want to write it as a standard notation, so I want to get rid of the times 10 to the negative third. So what does the negative 3 tell me to do with the exponent? Move it three times left. One, two, three. That's its new home. So the secondary answer would be point and add one, two blanks, and then the five. So that would be the secondary answer. All right, so 
So I want to give you a word problem so that you kind of get an idea of what you'll be working on. Uh, you, both answers, because the directions ask for two answers. Okay. All right, so here's a word problem. In 2010, the world population... Yep, you got to write it down, sorry. ...was about... 6 trillion 860... No, eight six billion eight hundred sixty million. The population of the U.S. The United States was about three times ten to the eighth power. About how much larger? is the world population than the population in the US. Okay. Mathematically, what does compare mean? Okay. Mathematically. It means we have one of four operations we could do. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Oh, this is, should say larger. Okay, well, when we're doing a comparison, you guys should know this by now. You've done it since elementary school you are doing subtract or division, okay? So we're going to be comparing using division. Now, the word that kind of intrigues me is this word here. So what does that tell us to do with our numbers? What does about tell us? Say? It tells us an estimate. So what, can we estimate 3 times 10 to the 8th? No, that's pretty as simple as it is. What about the 6,860,000,000? Okay, that one we could estimate. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take him. And we're going to say that he is approximately equal to about 7 billion. Or... Let's write it as scientific notation. What's my exponent going to be? Count them up. What's our expo exponent going to be? Hello, people. Count. Nine, thank you. Woo! Three, three, three. That's a nine. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're comparing the world, because we know it's larger, to the U.S. Again, it's already set up for us to know how to do the division. We're going to take seven and we're going to divide it by three. So seven or three goes into seven twice, which is six with one left over, bring down a zero. And three goes into ten three times, which is nine, with one left over. And we're gonna get repeating. We're gonna get that. Okay. So we could say this part is approximately two point three. Now exponent wise, we're gonna grab oops, sorry. Forget that. I don't know why I wrote that. Exponent wise, we're going to grab these guys. And we're going to do 9 take away 8. And 
And so we would say here, that would be about 10 to the first power. Or, oh, let's change that to black. What's 2.3 times 10 to the first power? What's that equal? Oh, come on, people. This is the easy piece. What is 10 to the first power equal? What is 10 to the first power equal? 10. What's 2.3 times 10? 23. Holy smokes. Okay. So we get 23. So what we would say is that the world population... is about 23 times larger than the U.S. population. This is more along the lines which your test questions are going to look like. I think Mr. Johnson wrote a really cool one about fireworks at Disneyland. So that's what you guys are going to work on tonight for your homework.